Chair and members, you are asked to provide a critical review of how the international health regulations perform during the outbreak of Ebola virus disease in West Africa. The review takes place at a time of nearly universal agreement that the international response to the outbreak was inadequate. When the number of cases in Guinea, Liberia, and Sierra Leone began to increase exponentially, all responders, including the Big Chow, were overwhelmed. These regulations are the only internationally agreed set of rules governing the timely and effective response to outbreaks of infectious diseases and other public health emergencies. If it's legally binding obligations on member states or state parties are not being met, change is urgently needed. If the Big Cho is not exercising its full authority under the regulations, change is urgently needed as well. Your job, let me say so, is not an easy one. Emerging and re-emerging infectious diseases have become a larger menace under the unique conditions of the 21st century. Even in this Ebola outbreak, of course, Nigeria, Mali and Senegal all managed to bring the, the issue under the, the, the outbreak under control very quickly indeed. And you can immediately see some of the things that were important in that. Um, the fact that the central government was involved and took it very seriously early on, that the national coordination mechanism was set up that um, there was massive communication to the population in a very constructive way. Um, but I think it's right, there are many ways that could be looked at just to sort of see and make sure that where we picked up the negatives, we've also seen the benefits of the positive. Um, and that applies to, I think, in emergency response. Of course, there are many agencies uh, within the UN or the international NGOs who are very familiar with the sorts of structures and ways of working that are needed in emergencies and that gave us the confidence to say the emergency um, health emergency response needs to look like this because this is what people have learnt about how you run emergencies really so yes I, I, I agree with you and obviously I can't go through every every matter that's in there but I think it would be good to make sure that we are uh, making sure that we, we take all that learning if we look at the history of the progress of Ebola I mean, it's very clear that there was a period in May and June sort of time when it was, there was a lot of information becoming known about what was happening about Ebola across these countries. But yet it was August the 8th when we finally got the public health emergency. So there was a period of time when to us it seemed very clear that had something happened that was much stronger during that period, that we could have stopped the events that became so extreme when you get into sort of August time. So there's first of all, you know, could more have been done? I don't think any dispute, anybody disputes could more have been done. Would that have happened if that fight was called is then the question. And our view was that yes, it, it was, because once that happened, there was much greater engagement of the whole international community. Um, but most particularly, I guess the reason we thought that it could have been earlier is because the information really was there. And a lot of information was flowing into WHO at that time. We need all countries to actually have the core capacities for the good of us all. So how do we make sure countries can afford to do that? And I think that comes back to the wider health system and public health financing issues, and potentially also that whole um, point about the, the, you know, the pandemic sort of facilities for, for funding at that point. But I'm sure your committee is going to want to have you know, further discussion on that. On health security, we are in the basement. We are so far away, and yet we're sitting on the possibility not just of more Ebola, but of something much more serious, as Dr. Chan has said. And so it is absolutely make or break. There's no, no, going to be no other opportunity for health to get right. And if we don't get it right, then others will take it over. It will go into the master management teams. It will go into other organizations. 
and WHO will be said, OK, you can go on being a knowledge organisation, but others will take on the job of health security. So my advice is, please respond to the call like never before. Countries, rich or poor, big or small, are in the same category insofar as transparency is concerned. They are afraid to lose face. They don't want to tell people that they have, you know, in, uh, unable to manage the outbreak. I think this is something we need to reflect on. Provide the incentives for countries to report early. As I said this morning, the minute you report, you are punished. And we know it. Why do you want to report? So we, in our own way of creating the IHR, did not understand the power of incentives and to encourage people to do the right thing. So I really would like the committee to think of, yes, of course, building capacity is important, but it may take a long time. But in the absence of capacity, what do you need transparency?